Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Tess Hembry. I'm NARO's uh, Director of Legislative Affairs, and I'm joined by my colleague. I'm Jenna Hampton, NARO's Legislative Affairs Analyst. We just wanted to thank you guys for participating in NARO's first annual August Advocacy Virtual Hill Day. Um, it's a new thing we're trying this year um, to try to increase um, contact with Capitol Hill and make sure that you guys are having contact with um, your legislators and their staff more than once a year, really, really develop those relationships. Um, this uh, very brief webinar is gonna do an overview of some of the things that we're asking you to talk about in those meetings on Virtual Hill Day. Um, we've got six focuses um, and we'll go into a small amount of detail on each of them. Um, the first focus is um, just the fact that federal housing solutions work um, and if they increase access to federal housing programs, um, we can address our affordability and scarcity issues. Um, the second topic is focused on increasing housing supply um, through community development programs and the low income housing tax credit. Um, the second topic is increasing access to the voucher program. The third topic is increasing voucher effectiveness and giving housing authorities the flexibility that they need to help families utilize their vouchers. Um, the next topic is preservation of the public housing program and the public housing stock. Um, and then finally, we'll be wrapping up with timely, robust fiscal year 23 appropriations. Um, but big picture, these, these topics, these asks are really important. Um, but I think the most important thing you can communicate to your congressional offices is what is going on in your communities and the impact that the federal dollars have had so far. Um, I know that congressional staffers, they get a lot of asks and they hear a lot of um, things that people need and hear a lot of negative stories. Um, but we've got a lot of positive stories to share about the impact that federal housing programs have in communities and um, the effectiveness of the work that the congressional staff are doing to try to, to increase um, the federal resources and communities. So more than anything, I hope that you take away from this um, webinar that you're the expert about what's going on in your community. Um, and you should be sharing your stories, tell your stories to your members of Congress that they understand what's happening. Um, and say thank you because they work really hard to try to uh, make sure that your community is represented in Congress. Um, so just keep that in mind as we're talking through these topics. Um, I know that some of you may not operate a voucher program or may not have public housing. Um, so these are these are things that are important to all NARO members, um, but really do um, think about what is most um, important to your community and what you want your congressional offices to hear. Um, so that said, let's dive into a little bit of the detail on some of these topics. So, um, the first topic that um, we have solutions that work, federal housing programs work. Um, again, that's just an overview of the fact that we are facing an affordable housing crisis at the moment, um, but we, we know how to fix it. Um, the programs that you guys administer in your communities work. Um, and so I just um, encourage you guys to talk about in general how the programs are working in your community and thank members of Congress and their staff um, for their work to bring resources into your community. Um, the next topic um, for Virtual Hill Day Ask is focusing on increasing housing supply. Um, we do recognize that there is a, a, a huge amount of scarcity of affordable housing in pretty much every community in the country and um, requesting things like additional vouchers doesn't work unless we have more housing supply, more affordable housing. Um, so this ask specifically focuses on the home and CDBG programs, um, increasing appropriations to both of those programs um, so that there's plenty of gap financing um, for affordable housing projects and things like the low-income housing tax credit mm -hmm. and the rental demonstration program. Um, again, the, the next um, topic within that is the low-income housing tax credit, a really important tool um, that we need to increase um, um, availability of and uh, give you guys some flexibilities to use, especially the 4% credit um, a little bit more. That ask specifically does reference a lot of the things within the Affordable Housing Credit Improvement Act, um, S-1136 and H.R. 2573. Um, those bills have been introduced both, obviously both in the House and the Senate, um, and we've been working for a number of years to try to push that forward. Um, 
and that's another um, focus of our Hill Day this, this year. Jenna, do you want to talk a little bit about the voucher um, uh, access? Sure. So we have a couple of different topics on vouchers this year. The first one is on expanding access to housing vouchers. So if anyone was with us last year for the summer symposium, we talked about universal housing vouchers. And these recommendations are kind of in that same vein of making sure that everyone who's eligible for, to receive a voucher eventually can access them. Um, and so we have a few different recommendations on that as well. The first one is to make emergency housing vouchers permanent. So that's the $5 billion that um, came through some COVID relief funding to make the emergency housing voucher program. Um, and so that's something that we would like to see permanent for people who receive those vouchers to continue using them as long as they need them um, and to keep them in the voucher, in the stock of vouchers that are available. We also, like I said, want to encourage Congress to expand the housing choice voucher to serve all eligible families. We know that um, only a fraction of the families who qualify for the program, um, who could you know, use the rental assistance are actually able to receive that because the program is underfunded right now. Um, and so in order to do that, we recommended that the housing choice voucher program shift from annual appropriations to mandatory spending to ensure that the program is funded adequately each year um, to the extent where it could be a universal program eventually. So that's what we're ultimately recommending to Congress. Um, and along with that, we would like to see them when they expand the voucher program to also make sure that agencies have enough administrative fees to administer the program and to make sure that everything's managed well and you all have the resources you need for the program. So moving on from that, Tess is gonna talk about our second voucher topic for the campaign. Yeah, um, so we recognize that a lot of communities, especially now with raising rents, um, are having challenges utilizing vouchers and helping families gain access to um, either units or landlords who are willing to participate in the program. Um, so seeing some of the successes that we've seen with the flexibilities that you've received in the last couple of years, um, we're recommending that, um, that there be additional flexibilities, especially with the admin fee and HAP, to allow you guys to do what you need to do to increase um, landlord participation in the program and provide additional resident services to make sure that families can utilize those vouchers. Um, and then also make sure that um, the, the payment standards are adequate for the rents in your communities. Um, we know that expanding the voucher program um, to, to everybody who's eligible one, it's a housing supply issue, but also a utilization issue. So we wanna make sure that the solutions that we're offering in conjunction with that really do help you guys fit the needs of your community and make sure the program is successful for everybody. Uh, and then we're gonna to transition to public housing. Did you wanna talk a little bit about that, Jenna? Sure, so another big topic that we have covered consistently at NARO is preserving public housing. So making sure that the units that are already available um, in terms of the hard public housing units are taken care of and preserved. Um, and so NARA recommends there, the first uh, big point is $70 billion to address the public housing capital fund backlog. So the backlog, um, as NARA has estimated, is upwards of $70 billion at this point, um, and is because Congress has consistently underfunded the account and consistently not met the maintenance needs of our public our nation's public housing stock. So we're asking Congress um, to provide that funding to make sure that the maintenance needs can be met, um, residents can be kept safe and healthy in their units, and that we don't continue losing thousands of units of public housing each year. Um, we also want to make sure that Congress is fully funding the public housing capital and operating funds annually. Like, like we said, the backlog is there because Congress has underfunded those accounts for so long. So we want to encourage them to fund those accounts um, at the rate of accrual and the rate that you all need um, to fully fund them and meet the needs of our agencies that manage public housing. We also know that a lot of our members are in support of redevelopment tools like the rental assistance demonstration. So we want to make sure that there's voluntary um, access to those tools to all agencies that want to, want to utilize them and that there's also resources available for you all to use those programs and to use RAD um, and other redevelopment methods um, if that is something that you're interested in. 
And then finally, Tess is going to finish this off with appropriations. <laughs> so yeah, annual appropriations is obviously something that we focus pretty heavily on at NARO because it, it, um, you guys rely on annual appropriations to do your job. Um, recent years, we've seen appropriations delayed until I think it was mid-March um, in fiscal year 2022 before a final bill was in place. So um, in, when members of Congress come back to DC after August recess in September, um, they'll be uh, cutting it pretty close to the end of the fiscal year on September 30th. Um, Congress has not approved all of the appropriations bills, all 12 of the bills. Um, so on October 1st, we are looking at a continuing resolution um, to keep the government funded until whatever date Congress decides um, to have that expire. So all of that said, um, it's a really high priority of NARO's to make sure that Congress hears the challenges that um, continual, continuing resolutions um, pose for you and your communities. Um, not knowing when you're going to have final funding um, makes it really difficult to plan. Um, and just making sure that we've got robust appropriations. Um, we saw the transportation HUD bill actually passed the House this week. Um, funding levels in that bill are really good, about 17% higher than um, current funding levels, um, which is gonna be needed to address the, the um, inflation and cost increases that we've seen recently. Uh, so all of that said, the, the ask that we're asking you to take to your members of Congress, one, obviously provide those robust funding levels that at least match the House approved levels. Um, and then to ensure that passage of the fiscal year 2023 T HUD spending bill, um, it won't be happening prior to the fiscal year on October 1st, but it's still a good message to convey um, because it is their job to pass appropriations bills and it, it makes it really difficult to have CRs all the time. Um, but um, that said, I would just encourage them to finish appropriations before the end of this Congress realistically. Um, yeah, so um, I know we press appropriations a lot, but again, it's, it's really, really critical to make sure that um, housing authorities and community development organizations have the funding they need to continue to serve the communities. So, yeah, that's that's why we're focusing on that. So that that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. The um, six topics that we are focusing on for Hill Day. The booklet that we just scrolled through will be providing to you to give to your congressional offices, so you don't have to memorize any of this. Um, and if you get questions that you don't know from offices, um, it's okay to admit you don't know. Um, when I'm meeting with offices, I actually prefer that there's something come up that I don't know the answer to because it's a really good excuse to follow up with the office later. They'll be looking for your email, they'll want to read it, um, and you can always ask Jenna or myself um, for assistance in answering whatever questions that they come up with. Um, so yeah, so don't worry about the details. Um, make sure that you are telling the story of your community. Talk about what's most relevant to your agency, to your community. Um, and yeah, I just thank you so much for participating in another Hill Day. Um, NARA advocacy continues to grow and it's because of people like you who are participating active advocates. Um, so we, we do thank you. Thanks everyone. We look forward to seeing you on Hill Day.